Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. For starters, I thought I would share with you a couple things I made over the weekend. Oh, of course. Oh. <laughs> of course. <laughs> I had made this pink one before when we were doing the class. And, right. then, uh -huh. um, and I had these two little critters that I had bought at the craft fair a year ago at the senior center. Uh, but a lady who makes adorable knitted animals. And so I was going to give him this bear and I thought, well, I need to make him a blanket too. So I made mm -hmm. him a blanket last weekend. Oh, wow. Yeah, I think they came out cute. And then um, I also made a fidget quilt for the father of a friend. And she sent me this picture. That's her dad who has stage four Alzheimer's. And so oh. I made it with a bunch of his favorite things, sports oh. things and fishing things and military things. So, Is that, is that one of my baseball ones? Yes, it is. It's oh, your thank you. Thank oh. you. That was great. So, um, and today we were going to talk about casserole carriers. Well, to, well, before you go to the castle, casserole carrier, I just want to show off what I what I Great. did um, be, because I didn't oh, want to do Bargello. It was it was too comp, you know, because I, I went over the instructions over and over again. So I did I did the I did the rail fence. Right. So this is material that I took from. Um, the senior centers. So it's, it's, it's a baby size, you know, quilt. And so I put some ideas together for casserole carriers and there's tons of them on the internet. So if you go browsing for them, you'll see. And don't forget, we've also got different shapes and sizes of pans. So we also have to think about that as we're designing what we want to do. So it's, partly about color, partly about how are you going to carry it? How are we going to uh, wrap up your box? And the principles are we want to keep it warm sometimes, not, not always. And we want to carry it safely. So it's always awkward, but it's full, it's heavy. And uh, you want to keep the heat in, but not on your knees. If you're carrying it on your lap, you want to protect your knees to a certain extent and have a safe way of carrying it around. So here's some more. These are more for round dishes like pies. Oh. Lots of different ideas, different straps, different ways of gathering the fabric together at the top. So first of all, we need to find out what size pan we're dealing with. And what I did was just lay it upside down on my green board because not only the container, which is usually some fairly set size like you would read on the back of your cake mix box, but it also sometimes has a lip. So see how this has a little lip at the top. So you want to get all the way around the entire container, not just the content size. And one way you can measure it, try to think about it, is just try it with a towel. So I cut it, I took a towel and folded it lengthwise and then pretended that was my carrier and tried to see what size I would want for this size pan. And basically what you want is three times the length of your pan. So what I call the body wrap would, would be three times the length of the pan. And you want to cover the food, of course, with some plastic or foil so you're not getting the food directly on your carrier. And fold the ends so now you have two layers uh, on top of the food to keep it warm. And sometimes you can put some reflective batting under the pan. So heat rises, so the top is the most important. But the bottom is important if you're carrying it on your lap. And then you need side pieces in some way to carry it. So what I have here is the red rectangle is going to go under the body wrap one um, so that you're, again, carrying the weight of it 
as firmly as possible. And then you might have handles up here or you might have straps. And the straps should go all the way under. They shouldn't just attach at the top like a purse because the weight of it is gonna be important. So I would put the, the straps all the way under in order to support the weight and balance it correctly. You wanna keep it flat, otherwise you're gonna spill it in the car. So those are the basic principles. And the, the thermal wrap is called Inselbright um, and it has a mylar side to it. So this side is fuzzy and this bright side is actually mylar and it reflects the heat or the cold back to the source but it's this shiny side that does that reflecting. So you want the shiny side toward the food. This is what we used for the hot pads, this insel bright. It's not absolutely necessary, but it's nice. So, and then the, the next question is how are we gonna carry it? And then you can see there's a ton of different possibilities for how to do that. This is a simplicity pattern that you can get that talks about um, casserole carriers. So they have ideas and they, they've oh. used the sort of purse straps. This one has straps that go all the way under. You can see it's just a one continuous thing, but that gives you a good strong way to carry it. So as you design these things, think about the weight of it, the stability, you want it to be flat, you want it to, to last a while and go through the wash and you want it to protect the heat of the dish and protect you from the heat of the dish. So straps that go under are stronger than ones that just attach at the top. And in this case, what they're doing is gathering the four directions of this square around the pie plate. And so you can see they've got one strap that just goes diagonally across here and then loops on the other two ends and then they gather them together. So this center strap gets pulled up through these side loops. So you now have one strap to carry it from. And this one, um, what I tried to do for this presentation was I chose two patterns that are really easy to do. Um, this one, you can get a downloadable pattern for $7 from uh, is Crafty Stacy. Uh, there's also a video on how to do this style that's on the internet. And that's the one I'm gonna show you today. So I figured I would have a nine inch pie plate and then you have to think the thickness of it too. So it's about two inches high. So I, I've taken the nine inch pie plate plus two inches for the height on both sides and another nine inches to cover it. So I want at least 24 inches diagonally to make this square. And how did I figure that out? Well. What I did was I took my ruler and put it on the 45 degree line because I, I want to measure the diagonal and I want this diagonal to be 24. So then I measured from here to here to get my 24 inches. And now using this line, I can take the number on this line. I've cut the numbers off at the bottom but you take that in here. So I, it stretched from 24 here to seven here. So that makes a 17 inch square, okay? So if I were to cut a piece of material 17 inches square, it's diagonal it would be 24 inches. Questions about that? And I added one more inch just for good measure. So I, what I cut was an 18 inch square of fabric. So then I prepared my top, my lining and my batting. And I wanted to show you that I often 
you take old pieces of batting that are left over. You know, when you make a quilt, sometimes you're cutting off seven or nine inches on one, on it on an end, and I can piece them together. And the stitch that I use is not just a zigzag; it's a sort of ziggity saggity. It has multiple stitches along here, so it's a sort of ziggity zaggity stitch. And that way you get a really flat join. If you just use a zigzag, it'll, it'll buckle and you'll get a, um, like a scar between the two. But with this ziggity zaggity stitch, I get a really flat join. And by the time you make up your piece, you won't even know that it's there. So for baby quilts and for small pieces, I'm usually joining leftovers, not using a new piece of, of batting. The straps, you wanna cut four times the width of your finished strap. So I've, I figured if I want a half inch strip, uh, a half inch strap, half, in, half an inch wide, I cut two inches. So in this case, I cut one piece, two inches by the width of the fabric and I folded it in, in half and pressed it. Then you, you open it up and fold the, one of those halves to that center crisp line that you made before. So essentially what we're making is, is almost like bias binding, except this is cut on straight grain, it's not biased. So, but it's that same format so that all of the raw edges are gonna be in the middle and we're only gonna have uh, nice finished edges on the outside. So I'm doing that two times pressing, press it in half and then press this half to the center to get it to the quarter mm -hmm. size. And here I am stitching it all the way down with all the raw edges in the middle. And so now it's four thicknesses. So that makes it pretty strong. And now I, I put it on the diagonal and I'm kind of cut it at least an inch longer than that diagonal so that I have a little room to play and seam, seam allowances and stuff like that. So I've, I'm layering it with the top on the bottom on my, on my board and the top is facing with the good side up. And then you put the lining on it down so that you've got your right sides together and then as the third layer, you put the batting. And I've pinned it near the outer edges. And then I trim it to size. So I've got my 18 inch square and I've got my um, strap here that I'm measuring. But now before we sew anything, I'm gonna put the strap between the top and the backing. So I feed it through amongst those uh, safety pins, just feed it right through and then stay stitch it on the very ends. So it'll stay in place. So the strap is inside and we're gonna turn this piece right side out, but we're trying to get the straps all positioned before we do that, okay? So you stay stitch it just an eighth of an inch from the edge so that the stay stitching is going to be inside the seam. We won't see it when it's finished, but meanwhile, it'll just hold it in place so we don't have to wrestle with it. Now cut from that uh, strap that I made, you remember it's the width of the fabric. So width of fabric is usually about how long? 44 inches. Good, 44 inches. So uh, I have plenty, right? I used 19 inches so far. Here's another 10 inches, two five inch straps. So um, we have plenty from that one piece that we made. I'm gonna take one of those pieces, fold it in half, and now I'm gonna attach it to the other two corners. So all my raw edges are at the outside and the fold is under my finger here. And just stay stitch that just to hold it in place so it doesn't wiggle around. 
and I'm not going to do it directly on the corner. I'm just going to move it out of the way of the seam. So I've got my quarter of an inch seam allowance and just a teeny bit more. And then I stay stitch that guy in place. So now all those straps are inside of my sandwich between those two right sides. And now I'm gonna turn the piece right side out. I left five inches open so that I could turn it, turn the piece right side out. This is just like we did with those microwave bowls. And once I get it turned right side out, I'll have the top and the lining on the outside, the battings in the middle and the loops are all now on the outside. And I'm gonna to top stitch it all the way around, closing up that gap. And then we have our finished piece. So here I was trying a pie in it and I put some foil on top. It doesn't really help. Oh, I know what that is. <laughs> but it could. <laughs> so you're gonna cover your food so that you don't get the food next to your carrier. And you put it underneath that diagonal strap and then fold these two looped ends over the middle. And now take the center strap and feed it up through the loops. Oh, this is perfect. I just it's was good. with my friend who was delivering a uh, quiche and mm -hmm. had no carrier for it. This would have been perfect. She's perfect. been doing this for all the neighbors. Oh. <laughs> you see, it's really simple. You can make this up very easily. And I didn't even oh, want to wow because it's only an 18 inch piece, but you could certainly quilt it. Um, you know, as we said, the batting will tell you every four inches or six inches, you could just run a stitching line across just to keep it from shifting when it goes through the laundry, but it's quite presentable right now. Mm. I'll just get that. The other one for the rectangular pans and the rectangular pans are going to be heavier. That's one. And oh. they come in all, all different sizes. So you never know what size. And I, one of the things I liked about this design is that it's not dependent on the size. It's very flexible. So you could carry a small pan, you could carry a big pan and they all work in this. And the this design by Charlie Knight was um, inspired by the Japanese way of taking a scarf and using a scarf to wrap things and carry things all the time. So it's a variation on a scarf. And then if you search for casserole, you'll find it. And she has a free pattern, uh, which I can send you or you can get it from her website. Yeah. Is this also the pie one? Cause that is, I gotta have that. Uh, I also have the information about the pie one. It, it's, a, it's a different one. But if right. you just uh, look, I, if, what I did to start was I went to images.google.com and okay. look for casserole carriers, and you'll see a million of them. So, okay, images. Got it. Configuration, and you are not the only person who has ever looked for this. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. Uh, yeah. Carriers. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. I love this idea. Oh, yeah. So for this one, I followed her directions. I made 25 six and a half inch squares and did them all as uh, half square triangles, put them together. And I arranged them like this. You can arrange them however you wish. Uh, they can be more scrappy or less scrappy. Whatever you want to do is fine. And you wind up with a 30 and a half inch square, which, by the way, could have been whole cloth like I did for the pie. Um, it doesn't have to be pieced. It can be whatever you want it to be. And then you, you fold it diagonally. So in other words, you take this corner and you match it up with this corner. So you fold it diagonally. Okay, so now you've got one big triangle. And of that triangle, you cut off two of those points. And I chose to take off these points so you measure 10 inches down from the corner on each of these two sides and then cut it diagonally. And that's where those handles are going to go. And for the handles, we do two pieces that are 13 by 21 and folded them in half lengthwise, one at a time. And then I sewed a quarter inch seam down the side of it. And then you turn that right side out and press it 
So it looks pretty much the same, but now it has no raw edges, right? And I could just run my hand down, right down the middle of it and grab the other end and pull it through. So almost like a sleeve, because there's plenty of room inside to do that. And then you pin the handle on one of those cut, saw, cut ends. So the handle looks like this, folded just so it looks like the picture. And you leave three quarters to an inch um, free here at the ends for your seam allowances. So I set it, then I went back and matched up the edges just perfectly and put some pins in it and did my stay stitching. And again, this stay stitching is not a quarter of an inch, it's less, something like an eighth of an inch. And I did it twice for strength because again, our casserole is gonna be kind of heavy. So we want it to be really firm. You don't want those handles to pull off, but they're generous enough. They're probably not going to, but I just double stitch things. Uh, and this stitching is gonna be inside of our final seam allowance anyway. This is just for security. And now I layered the piece. So I put my top down, I put my backing down, right sides together. And then I put my piece of batting on top of that. So each of these layers is bigger than the one before. And that way I'm making sure as I do each one that I'm covering. I want to make sure that this is going to cover every little bit of the top and that the batting is going to cover every little bit of the backing. If you're using Insel Bright, you want to want to have the bright side toward this lining because your casserole is going to sit on top of the lining, right? And then I turned the whole piece over and pinned all around the edges. So you don't have to pin the middle of this piece because we haven't turned it yet, but we do need to pin around the edges to make sure that we've got that sandwich firmly connected. And I leave a five inch opening. And one of the things I do because I, I'm focusing so much on keeping all these edges together and making sure my quarter inch seam is right, that sometimes I lose track of where I'm supposed to stop. So I've gotten in the habit of making myself a start pin and a stop pin. So I use a green pin for go <laughs> and a red <laughs> pin for stop. And then um, and as I go all the way around this piece, that'll remind me, uh, oh, this is the end, my dear. You need to leave this part open, okay? I, that's, that's what we do in the machine shop. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, you have, yeah. Sometimes I do like, across with the two pins yes <laughs> i would yeah, stop marker. at every red pin <laughs> yeah whatever you have for a marker is great so now that we've gotten all the way around here's our stop pin that um we're going to take all the pins out the safety pins i did <laughs> before and any other pins you have on the edge and the handles that are inside of our sandwich once we turn this piece, the handles will be on the outside. We'll press all the edges and then top stitch all the way around and close up that gap. Right. That's our stop pin and our gap. And we'll turn it and we'll press it. And now we're ready to try it in our pan. So I put, this is a smallish casserole dish, but I've since tried it with one that's about three inches bigger than that. Um, and they work work fine both ways. I didn't bother putting foil on it this time, but you get the idea. You would normally have food in here and, and some sort of covering. Um, there are pins that have covers, but anything will be fine. And the, the two pointed corners get folded over the food. And remember the dish is sitting on the lining. So if we had some insel bright here, we want the bright side up toward the lining as you sandwich it. Okay. Ta-da, there it is. I've got the pan inside. I hung it on the doorway because to take a picture, I needed a third hand, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
but that came out nicely. You know, I, I had set it diagonally, but because we folded it diagonally, it comes out as horizontal stripes, which was kind of fun. It's perfect for a picnic. Yeah. Perfect. So that's it. So I've got those two casserole and pie covers for you. So Janet, does that meet your needs or did you have something else in mind? Because you're the one who had requested the casserole carrier. Yeah, yeah. That sounds great. Um, I don't know when I'll have time to make them, but <laughs> <laughs> now that the weather's getting nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I had coffee with a friend who is also fully vaccinated uh, just yesterday, and it was such a thrill. Oh, I know. Mm. Finally. <laughs> Janet, what are you working on this morning? Um, oh, I finished this. Uh, oh, yeah. Great. Oh, and, uh, yeah, it's, it's a washcloth. And uh, yeah, it was pretty easy. It's, it's, a, it's a four. Pretty. Yeah. And so here, this is, uh, I know she was, this is, this is a rose in the works. It's, it's, it's mm. a rose. Great color. I'm just using up my yarn stash. Well, um, Joyce, we know that eventually when everybody's vaccinated and the senior center, you know, reopens and, and, and we'll go back to having, you know, the fears and all that. So it, it was like, it's would casserole carriers, you know, be, you know, be something that people, you know, would buy. Um, but, I, because I just remember, you know, they, they weren't that interested in the, you know, just being there manning the table. They weren't interested in the quilts. They were interested in the smaller stuff, you know, in those hot mats and those, you know, microwave, you know, holders and all of that. So, so, and you're, and you're putting in all this time to show us, this is how you can make a Ooh, casserole like area. So, so I want to be able like to handle. use what, what you've been showing us and, and telling us and um, uh, yeah, I, I'm one of these, you know what? So you showed me how to do it. So now what am I gonna do? Am I, am I gonna make a casserole, you know, um, carrier? I, I don't know, usually when I do potluck or bring stuff to church, <laughs> I buy stuff, it's so much easier <laughs> than having to cook or, you know, if I make a dessert, it, it doesn't have to stay, you know, hot, but. But that's something, right. you know, we can just look at, you know, for, for the future. Yeah, I agree with you, Betty. And I think that I was thinking of that, too, as I was making it, that at the pie carrier in particular is not a huge effort, but it would be a clever little thing to have on the on the table. And I think it would sell reasonably well. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, think about that. And, and so if you want to practice your skills, this is a nice, easy piece to practice on. You can quilt it or not quilt it as you wish, um, but just, just different bright colors. Doesn't take a lot of material. Um, so a half a yard of material would be plenty. And uh, I think that it would be really great. Look, look at these that have the wooden spoons as part of the carrier. I thought that was- I like color. that. Mm -hmm. So here they're actually used at the handles. I, I made one one time with dowels in it. That's very oh. similar, similar to this one. Let's see if I can make that bigger for you. Yeah. Here's another one. Um, and so the wooden spoons are actually used as part of the handle. So you can either do it with a dowel or you can do it with a spoon. And here's a little pocket on the outside, but dowels for the carrier. Mm -hmm. mm. I love it. And this one has an open space here, so you can put your hand through these open spaces. And you can see some of them are, are fancier. This looks like it zips all the way around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this has zippers all the way around. Mm -hmm. That's a lot more engineering as far as that goes. Yeah, I wanted something with its own lid. You were talking about how you had to have a piece of plastic or something over it. 
and and of course completely washable. Right, because you're probably going to spill on it. And yeah, right. You're, you're going to spill it, on the inside. You want it to have it. some life. You want to make sure it's going to make it through the washing machine without disintegrating. Yeah. But you can see there are tons of different uh, designs. I hope everybody has a great week, and I'll see you yeah. next Tuesday. Okay. Thank you, everybody. You too. Enjoy this Thank weather and get out here. there and get some vitamin D. Yeah. yeah. Take, take care, you. everybody. Bye-bye.